Hi, George here. And today we'll be using the Photoshop Elements selection tools to remove this background in here and replace it with a new background just like that. There we go. That's a straightforward process, but there are a few tips and tricks in here I think will help the process for you to get the best picture. I'll start off by just getting rid of all the stuff that we don't need over here, right hand side. That's all of that. Let's just trash that out. And there's the original picture. And we'll be using this second picture over here for our new background. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to go in and make a careful selection around our foreground subject and use that to make a layer mask. And you can use any selection tool you want. The one I happen to like using the most is the polygonal lasso tool for a couple of reasons. Let me show you what those are. First off, the standard tool is the regular lasso tool. And the problem with the lasso tool is it's kind of hard to control careful edges. It tends to wobble around a little bit. It depends upon what mouse you're using. It can be a bit wobbly like that. And then if you let go, it's going to collapse that selection and you have to fix that or start over again. So you have to do your selection in just one pass or it's not going to work for you. The polygonal lasso tool doesn't have that problem because we can come in here and you can click and then you can look over the mouse, move things around, choose your new spot, whatever you want to do, and it's not going to collapse that selection. Double click, that collapses it. Okay, let's just deselect that. So it's much easier to use when you're making a basic selection. Now, if I was doing just a real large selection, I'd probably use a lasso tool, just straight lasso because it's a lot faster. But for a more careful selection, I'll use the polygonal lasso tool, especially if I'm planning on zooming in just a little bit like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll make our selection. I have my feathering set at one pixel down here just for a little bit of a softening of the edge. We may have to adjust that later, but it's good for our start. And I want to make just a simple selection just outside of the subject right here. Don't want to get in too close on that. You don't want to go into the subject, just stay just outside and make a fairly quick selection. We'll come back and clean this up with the refined edge. Now there's a problem down there around the foot. We'll solve that later on. And that's the shadowing on the bottom side is very close to the coloration of that water. So that's going to get missed by the refined edge. But we can fix that again as we go. Now, if you run out of space, hold the space bar down and you can then push your picture around and you can go across outside like this just fine. Again, hold the space bar down and then we'll go back over to this side here. When you're using the polygonal lasso tool, make sure you don't click too fast or it's going to collapse your selection. And then you should do just fine. You can do this in big steps like I'm doing here and that's okay. Go back to the beginning and that then completes your selection. Let's now come down to the refine edge button. And here's a refine edge tool. The normal size here is 35. I like making it just a little bit larger than my space. And this looks pretty good. 35 looks pretty good. And so we come in and brush right along that edge. And this will allow Photoshop elements to go in and do a tighter job for that and give you a nice clean edge for your selection. This works out very well if you have good contrast separation or good color separation from your background. We have both in this case. And when you use this tool, just do it little, little short movements like this. Don't try to go too fast. And then let Photoshop Elements come in and figure that out. And then we'll walk clear around the whole image here. Now if it goes into here, I tend to come in and push in like that. That tends to work better for hair edges like we have right down in there kind of wispy edges. And again, spacebar to move the image. And we'll finish this off clear around this side. Then we'll go back and we'll clean up the other side. Now there's a bit in here I'll have to fix that's missing. We'll come back to that on the layer mask. And same thing for the shadow on the foot. We'll do that on the layer mask. Let's just go clear around and make sure we have our nice clean edge in here. There will probably be a little bit of a shadowing or a little bit of a line happening because we have a very dark background here and we're going on to a light background and we had the feathering set at once. So there'll be a little bit of an edge, but there are ways of cleaning that edge up. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's now go over here and change the selection to new layer with layer mask. I'm gonna give it just one pixel here on the smart radius. Leave everything else alone. I'll bring in a, a bit of contrast. This sometimes will help clean up edges. And I think that's all right. 
She was okay. And here's our layering mask. It looks pretty good. Looks nice in here. Looks pretty good up here. Missed it up right here. And kind of messed things up over here. We can fix all that on the layer mask itself. Okay, let's zoom back out to fit screen. And I'll also save at this point, Control S to save. A good idea to save frequently as you go. And there we are. Let's now zoom in and take care of any edge issues. We'll start right over here. Now, there's a little bit of a dark line, as I said, there might be that happening in here because we had that feathering on there. We'll try a couple of things on this to fix that dark edge. This is gonna be on the layer mask side. So go over here to the layer mask, click on that, look for that light blue outline. That means you're on the layer mask part of that layer. And the first thing I'd like to try is this tool right here. This is often hidden underneath that tool. And this is the burn tool. And there's the size, 10 pixel. And just brush right along that edge. Now what this does is it's going to make the edge of the layer mask more contrasty. And sometimes that's all you need. It depends upon what the actual problem is. Now in this case, it's not really fixing that for me. Let's see where we can find where this will work. I'll use the space bar to move this over. And I think a little bit of stuff right here. It tends to work out very well around here. And that's looking pretty good in there. And it's brushed several times. Notice I have my exposure set at 50%, so it's not coming in too strong, which allows me to build up the effect in here. Just a few brushes like that. It makes that edge more contrasty. Now in here, it's a bit messed up, as you can see, kind of strange looking. We'll fix that in just a second. Let's try right around the face in here. Okay, this tool is not really doing everything I want. It's helping a little bit out on the back of the hair, but not much else. So let's now switch over to the brush tool. And we'll set this at, again, 50% of pass, just so I can work up on that. And let's bring our size up a bit. That's too big. That's pretty good. Now black is going to hide and white is going to show. So if I go over here and paint in here with black, I can hide that bit right there. I can change my colors to white and I can come in and then bring back in some of the hair right in there that, that got missed. Just kind of work back and forth with this tool. And then back to black again. And I'll come in just edging just a little bit on that. There we go. Now the smaller your brush, the less of a gradient effect you're going to be having in here. So if the edge is really critical, like right along up in here. I'll go to a much smaller brush. Let's come down to a four pixel in here. Very small brush. And I'm going to zoom in on this. Hold the space bar down to move things around. And then back to our brush tool. And now I can come in and just carefully paint right along that edge to get rid of that little bit of a haloing effect. There we go. Now I could have tried doing the initial selection without any feathering. And this may have been a little bit better in some spots not in others. I've tried this same picture a couple of ways and that tended to work the best for the overall image. But sometimes you're just going to have to come in here and be a bit more careful. Now this isn't a problem if I was going on to another dark background. So if the background was similar and you always get the best effect if your backgrounds are similar to your original background, then you wouldn't see this at all. I'm only being this careful in here because we're going from a dark background onto a light background, and then everything on the edge shows then. So you have to take more precautions and more care if you're going from a dark to a light background or a light to a dark background. Either one would take a bit more control in here to get a real nice effect, real nice clean effect. It's also easiest to see right now with just a transparent background than it is on the final picture. It'll tend to blend in a lot better there than we're seeing right here. So like with everything else, the more effort you put in, the better your picture is going to look. Okay, let's just work around here a little bit. And then I'll finish up the rest of this off camera since it will take me probably 10 minutes to carefully clean everything up. So let's go down and take a look at the important part. And that's at the foot down here. Okay, that obviously really needs to be taken care of a lot in here. This kind of stuff can just get Paint it out like that, just a few strokes. Clean those spots out. Things like that tend to happen with the 
refined edge brush a lot. But I'll come in here, I'll do a real careful job along the edge here of the leg, for instance, but I'll do that off camera as well to save time. But let's take a look at that foot problem, and that's the shadowing behind the foot here. Now, I want to leave a little bit of the shadow in, so I'm just going to paint in carefully like this. Leave a little bit of that shadow, but not too much, because there should be a shadow on that side of the foot. And then over here, we actually lost a bit of our foot right here. So this is where you're going to come back in, change to a white color instead of a black, paint this back in again, and take it clear out until you get into the background image. And then you should be able to see where that foot is kind of cutting off. And it's right in that area there somewhere. Okay, and then switch back over to black again, and then paint back in just a little bit here. And that should give you a nice clean edge. There we go. And of course, come in and remove all this stuff. This is easier if you go to full opacity for these things. It's kind of stuff outside. And just go through and clean up your layer mask. Okay, at this point, I'm going to pause the video and then I'll finish this part of the process, this little cleanup step. And then I'll bring the video right back up again. Okay, there's the cleaned up layer mask. You have a little spot right down in here where the background is still showing through. Let's go ahead and fix that one. We'll just zoom in on that. There we go. And this one's pretty easy. You're going to use the same tools. Make sure you're on the layer mask side over here. Look for that light blue outline. Grab your polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to change the feathering here to zero on this one because it's a very small area. And let's just make a nice little basic suction right along the edge in here. Now, if you have this kind of an edge, what you're looking for is the kind of mid-tone in that edge. So you have a little bit of the darkness going into the light, a little bit of the light going into the darkness. You want to get right in the middle of that kind of mid-tone area. And that's the perfect spot for placing down your new line in here for your new selection. Go back to the beginning. There you go. And then let's grab the paint brush again. We're still on that layer mask. I'm going to bring my size up a bit. We have our opacity here at 100. A bit too large. Let's set this at 10. Should be about right. There we go. And then just paint right onto that layer mask with the black paint, and that hides that section. And Control D to deselect. All right, that takes care of the removal of the background part. Let's now bring in our new background into this. Get the photo bin, that's this picture right here. Now I have this as a floating window. If you don't have that, just go up here to edit, come down to preferences and general right here. And that's that checkbox right there, allow floating documents in expert mode. Make sure that, that is checked. Choose OK. We can then float our document here. The reason I like this is I can then describe that background, drag it over here, drop them on. And there we go. Now, it's in front of our layer, so let's pull the layer down underneath, so it's behind the layer, and then position that, and that's a bit too small. I'll make it a little larger in here. I want to just off the edges, and I can then line up that background a bit better. Looks like right about here lines up pretty well. Now, it's a bit kind of pushing off to the right, just a touch in there. So let's go over here to zoom. I'm going to back out just a little bit. There we go. Back my move tool. So I want to be able to see those control handles up here on the actual picture. You can see them right in there. Let's now go up to Image, come down to Transform and Skew. Grab the top middle, and I can then move that back and forth. And that allows me to line up those parallel lines and get them nicely lined up in here. And I think that looks pretty natural. Let's choose OK. I'm seeing just a little bit right in here of that original pier showing. Probably not a big deal, but I'm going to take it out anyway, just to be real clean in here. And we'll do that with just some clone stamping. Here's our clone stamp tool. There it is. And I'll come over here and just grab some of this stuff. Hold the Alt key down and click. That's your clone from spot. And then bring it in here and we'll clone to. Now it's going to be going in behind our foreground picture, so there's no real reason to worry about that edge. And just paint that out. There we go. Again, hold the space bar down to move things over. And that works. There's a little bit of duplication in here that's pretty easy to see. You can see that 
little two dots and two dots. I'm just going to clone stamp on top of that one so I don't have that duplication happening. And that's fine. Let's go back to fit on screen. And there we go. Looking real nice. Now, last little thing in here. It's a little bit of a real fine touch, but if you notice that the foreground of the pier here is just a little bit bluer than that background pier in there. Just a slightly different color. Not much, but it's just, just a little hint different color. We can adjust that. Let's go up to that layer up here. And then go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer and Photo Filter. Where it says Use Previous Layer, check that. Choose OK. And the one you want is just a warming filter. Now the default here is the 85. And actually, that's the right one. Notice how that this now matches beautifully in there. If I hide that, there's before, just a little bit of a bluishness. If I show it again, the colors now match perfectly. So, and there we are. We've now used some selection tools to remove that background and replace it with a new background. Let's just take a look at the original in here. There's our original and there's our new background. I think she's a lot happier in this new location. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. Take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.